and close your eyes. And just take some time to settle in here. So I know we're in such a beautiful space, but just taking this opportunity to tune inward. So letting the eyes fall closed and starting to become aware of the internal landscape of your body. Feeling the rhythm of your breath. Feeling the beating of your heart. Noticing sensations in the body, places that might need a little attention today or extra care this morning. And also those places that might feel strong and open, expansive. So taking this time to invite all of it in, however you're feeling, physically, mentally, emotionally, on this particular Saturday morning, allowing it all to be just as it is, without pushing anything away, without trying to change anything, just allowing yourself to be present in this moment in your body, in your breath, in your heart. Allowing this practice to be an opportunity to let us connect or unite all the parts of ourselves, our bodies, our minds, our hearts, our spirits, so we can become most aligned, most conscious, most connected, most awake. As you're seated here, feel the hips and the legs and the sitting bones grounded and rooted towards the earth. Feel the crown of the head, the very top of the head reach up towards the sky. Allow the ribs to float up away from the hips so your waist gets longer, your belly and your back get longer. Feel your heart and chest and collarbones wide open. Let the head lift up just a little taller so you feel space at the sides of the neck the back of the neck, the front of the throat. Notice if your chin is lifted or dropped, see if you could just create a little bit of a longer cervical spine or back of neck, so the chin might just drop slightly. And then focus on your breath, take a deep inhale. and full exhale. As you breathe in, let the breath fill the lowest part of your belly, the middle portion of the ribs, the upper portion of the heart and chest and collarbones. And as you exhale, let the breath leave the chest, the ribs, the belly, until you're empty at the bottom, there's no breath left. And then do that again, deep inhale. Full exhale. Continue that dirga three-part breath and start to let your awareness expand beyond your body, beyond your breath. Start to feel the temperature of the air 
or the sun. Notice the sounds close by or further in the distance. Beginning to honor this connection with the physical space that we're practicing in today. The collective energy of the people that we're practicing in community with today. The birds, the animals sound of the water. Take another deep inhale. And full exhale. And your next in-breath, let your hands float together to form a prayer position or Anjali Mudra in front of the heart. The palms can meet. And as you exhale, bow your head to your own heart, to yourself and perhaps create an intention for this morning's practice. So what do you wanna take from today? How do you wanna feel during your practice or when you finish your practice and transition off your mat? Inviting in whatever it is that you're seeking today, physically, mentally, emotionally. And then as you inhale, slide your hands towards the sky, lengthen the arms, you can lift the face and look up. And exhale, open the arms, bring your chin to your chest, let your fingertips find the ground. Do that again, big breath in, lift out and up through the fingers. Good, you guys are doing great, look up. Exhale, open wide. So just starting to link your breath with your movement. One more time, nice and easy sun breath to get the arms moving, the head moving. And exhale, release, hold the bottom. On your next inhale, take the right arm out and up. I'm gonna mirror you. And exhale up and over to the left and you could look up. Take a breath here. And then turn your face down and wrap that top arm behind you. So bring the arm down, the thumb down, bend your elbow. Let the back of the hand touch the low back or let the fingers reach right over towards the hip. As you're doing this, roll the shoulder up, the top shoulder, and roll the face down. You could have a steady gaze at the ground or you could close your eyes. And take just a couple breaths here. Yeah, the arm that's behind you, stretch it above your ear once more. Let your top arm pull you up, stretch up and over the other way. Open the ribs, the waist, look up. Take a deep breath in. And as you exhale, same thing, turn the face down, wrap the thumb down, bend the elbow, let the back of the hand touch the low back or the hip crease, roll the shoulder up, roll the face down. Steady gaze or closing your eyes. Good. Arm that's behind your back, go ahead and float it above the ear for that side stretch again. And then let the top arm pick you up, drop your chin, interlace your fingers behind your back, and then press the fist down so you can squeeze the backs, the shoulders together, and open the heart and the chest, and look up. Exhale, release the gaze, release the hands, and roll the shoulders up, back and down. Good. Let's tip back and unravel our legs. So take your feet about as wide as your mat, and then just take a windshield wiper. So the knees are generously bent. Your feet are to the ground or the mat, and you're just flopping back and forth with the knees just to open up the hips and release any tension that might be happening there. Bring your knees over to the right, and they're wide apart, so they're wide enough apart so the inner thigh of your left leg and the inner knee can come down, and then hands are behind you and twist away from your knee, so you're going to look towards the opposite side, and you could either close your eyes again or take that steady gaze, look out over the horizon, find something to fix the gaze on, take a few breaths, just taking in this beautiful spot that we're so lucky to be able to practice in today. And then from here, just a nice easy hip warm up you may have done with me before, left hand to left hip, right fingers face the back, press the thigh forward, look to the side or look all the way to the back. 
and then press that thigh down, look to the side or all the way to the front or even over your left shoulder. And then do that again, inhale, press the thigh forward, look to the side, the back or over right shoulder. Exhale, release back down, hip comes down, face comes forward or over left shoulder. One more time, inhale, press forward. And exhale, release back. Let's reach the arm away off of our hip. Look at the thumb or beyond the thumb. And then as you inhale, lift the arm up towards the sky. Place your hand in front of the shin today. So we're in a modified version of pigeon pose. Press down into your fingers to rise up through the heart. Lift the face, look up. And then exhale, walk forward over that front leg, your new front leg. So be on the fingers or come on the forearms or open the elbows, stack your palms or fists, or even let the head drop. And you'll take a few breaths there. So in that modified pigeon, just to breathe into that right hip. Breathe into whatever area you're holding any tension. So maybe it's even the shoulders or the back, the hips, the thighs, sending the breath there. Good. And then from where you are, walk your body up. You can frame that front knee. So one hand by the thigh, one hand by the shin. Root down into the fingertips. Rise up through the heart, through the chest, through the throat, through the face. And then go ahead and look back down. Cartwheel the front arm up and over. And then bring the knees up and over. So now our knees are over to the opposite side, to the left. And you're turning your head over to the right and finding just that nice, easy twist. So we're starting with a very gentle warm up. So if it's comfortable, the hands can be right behind you. You're propped up here on the hands, rotating the spine, looking over the right shoulder and finding that steady gaze, focal or dristy point. And we'll take the same warm up here. So you can bring the right hand right to the right hip crease. That letter L just cups the hip, the back fingers face the back, press the thigh forward, rotate the thigh inward as you look to the back. Exhale, release, press the thigh down, look to the front or all the way over to the opposite side. And then do that again. Inhale, press forward, look to the side or the back. Exhale, release, back down. Good, you guys are doing great. One more time. Inhale, lifts. You're moving with your breath. You're flowing with your breath. And exhale, release. Hold the bottom. Reach the arm off the hip all the way away to open up the chest, the heart, to strengthen the back body, the back, the right shoulder. And then inhale, lift that arm. Exhale, place it down in front of the shin. And before we um, come down, you're going to rise up. So press into the fingers. Lift the chest. Open the heart. Open the collarbone. It's just a little back bend in the upper back. And now go ahead and walk over the front leg. And you could either pause on the hands or pause on the forearms or open the elbows, stack the palms or fists, and maybe let the head drop. Good. And holding there. And then when you're ready, come on and walk yourself back up. You can frame the front knee, pop up the chest, open up the heart, lift the face, look up at the sky. And release the gaze back down. One more cartwheel with the front arm up and over. We'll take the knees over to one side and over to the other side. Then just let the knees come up towards the um, sky, shuffle the feet uh, hip width, and then bring them all the way together so you can let the knees open and the feet touch. Take a hold of your ankles, press the heart through the arm bones. So you take almost like a seated cow back, press the belly forward, and then exhale, round your back, a seated cat back, tuck the tailbone under, draw the navel to the spine, hollow out the back, chin to chest. And do that again, inhale, open up, float the front body forward, look up. Exhale, release, back. Good, so you're moving with your breath. It's nice and slow and easy. It's cat and cow. So you inhale, press the spine forward. The tailbone goes back, the belly goes forward. And then as you exhale, round your back, the tailbone under, the navel to spine, you hollow out the belly, you really stretch back into the shoulders. 
And one more time, inhale, open up. And exhale, release. This time, sit up tall with a long spine from tailbone to head, lengthen, shoulders down and back, and you'll take a forward fold. So reach over the legs, and you could hold the ankles or you could hold the feet. You could also press the forearms down towards the calves, long back or round your spine. Taking a few breaths in bound angle, Baddha Konasana. And then when you're ready, lengthen your spine to come up. Take a hold of your ankles one more time. Float the heart up between the arm bones one more time. Spread the collarbones wide. Lift your face. And look back at the feet. Slide your hands along the shins to catch the knees. Bring the legs towards each other and come to tabletop. So you can spin your legs around and just come on to all fours. So you're going to keep your hands at the top of the mat. I'm just going to face this way, but your hands are forward. Your feet are back. Bring the hands a little further forward of the shoulders and start to circle the hips a few times in one direction. And then when the hips come towards the back, circle them the other way. And then when the hips come towards the back, take a child's pose. You could have wide knees or hip width distance knees, belly could come through the thighs, chest could come through the thighs. Any arm variation you like here, so simple could be extended child's arms reach forward. You could also take the arms alongside the body with the backs, the hands to the ground, palms open. Or if you like that prayer variation, you could press your hands to prayer, bend your elbows and fold your forearms back to your head. So you choose where you wanna be for child. It's a couple breaths here. And knowing that this is a good resting pose, so at any point during your practice, you could come back here. Good. Let's reach the arms forward if they were in a different variation. Shift forward to tabletop again. Bring the wrists underneath the shoulders. Move the knees underneath the hips and take just a simple hip wag side to side a couple times. Feeling that outer edge of the leg, the hip, the IT band. And pausing in tabletop, relax the belly down. So almost like you're gonna do a cow pose, but you're just kinda of, kind of hang out and the head is long, crown of the head reaching forward, but belly soft, chest soft. And we're gonna move the ribs around. So move the rib cage over to the right, all the way up like a cat pose, all the way over to the left, and then all the way back down like cow. And do that a few times. So really circle those ribs like you're in this barrel and you're touching all of the edges of the barrel with the ribs. Making sure that every inch of that makes contact with the rib cage. And then when the ribs come down, when you're ready, just move that the other way. And then the next time that the ribs come down, like cow, you're gonna take a full cow. So lift the tailbone, lift the heart, and then lift the face to look forward. So you're in just a regular cow, good. Breathe your breath out. Take a deep breath in. And then exhale round. As you breathe out, draw the navel up and in. Drop the head, drop the tail, hollow out the belly. And then inhale to cow, belly drops, tailbone lifts, heart radiates through the arms, face lift. One more time, exhale to curl. And inhale back through cow. From here, take a tabletop from head to tail. Curl your toes under. You're going to have two choices. So if you want to keep it gentle, you'll come to puppy. Keep your knees down, stretch the arms out, hips high. Chest comes to the mat forehead or chin to the mat. If you're ready to come up to dog, bring the hands a few inches further of the shoulders, curl your toes under, and float your hips up towards the sky, lifting your knees up off the ground. So either puppy or dog. If you're in dog and you want to pedal out, go ahead and pedal out. Press through one heel, press through the other heel. Just feel your ankles, your legs, your hips. 
moving or not moving in any way that would feel good here in dog or puppy. And then start to be still in your dog or your puppy. Spread your fingers wide if you're in dog. Imagine you're pressing the mat forward. Pull the hips back. Maybe invite a bend into your knees if you're in dog to get a little longer in the waist and the tailbone and the hips. Feel that strong, long back. And breathe. Good. From your down dog or your puppy pose, you're going to come to forward fold. So if you're in puppy, just rock up to stand. If you're in dog, walk feet to hands or hands to feet, as many steps as you'd like. Feet are hip width. <clears throat> you're upside down. If that's not comfortable, take a flat back with hands on the legs. Otherwise, hang out in your deep fold. Feet hip width, legs straight or slightly bent. Shake your head yes. Shake your head no. Let your head hang heavy. Let the shoulders relax towards the ears. Roll your shoulders up back and down a couple times. Good. And then let the shoulders relax. Bend the knees generously and slowly roll your body up to stand. Let your arms hang off of your shoulders. At the top, float your arms out and up. Big sun breath. Good job. All the way up. Palms touch. Slide your hands right through prayer. You can close your eyes and stand up tall and just notice how it feels to be upright here. Reconnect into your body and your breath. Take a deep inhale. And exhale, release your arms. Let's step up to the top of the mat so you can move forward. If you're not already there, take a big sun breath, feet hip width, arms lift up. Exhale, bend the knees and dive forward over the legs. So our modified half sun salutation. Inhale, lengthen hands to shins or fingertips to the mat. Pull the head away from the tail. Exhale, deep fold, soften the knees and drop your body. Inhale, reverse your swan dive out and up. Good job all the way up. You guys are doing awesome. Exhale, hands to prayer. You could close the eyes or steady open gaze. Take a deep breath in. And exhale, release your arms. Let's do that twice more. Inhale, lift. So just a good way to kind of get the breath moving and the body flowing. Exhale, dive. Inhale, stretch. Hands to shins or fingertips to mat. Exhale, deep fold. Inhale, reverse. You're doing great. Good. Exhale through prayer. You pause for a breath here. Deep inhale. And exhale, release. This is going to be the last time we're going to stay at the bottom here. Inhale, lift. Exhale, bend the knees, dive forward. Inhale, lengthen. Ardha Uttanasana, half forward fold. Hands to shins or fingertips to mat. Exhale, deep fold to stay at the bottom and step the right leg back. So you're in a low lunge here. Right leg back, left leg forward. Touch the ground if you can. If it feels way too far away, you could come up onto your thigh. If you had blocks nearby, you could put your hands on blocks. Bend the back knee, lift the heart, look up. Exhale, lift the hips, straighten the legs, head towards shin. Do that again. Bend both the knees, float the, far, the heart forward, look up. Exhale, lift the hips, head towards shin. And one more time, warming up those legs, building strength and stability and balance. Exhale, lift. Good, let's put a bend in the front knee and the back knee. Place the back knee down to the ground. Inhale the arms up to Anjanayasana or crescent lunge. Good, your hands could be shoulder width or press the palms together, interlace your fingers, point at the sky. And if you wanna take it back, just lift the ribs, lift the face, look up. And exhale, dive over your leg. Let's stretch it back from here. So pull your hips back, straighten the front leg, flex your foot, walk your hands back, lengthen your spine, head away from tail. And then exhale, deepen your fold. Take just a breath or so here. Good. And then when you're ready, roll over the sole of the foot, bend the front knee, dip the hips. From here, back toes curled under, lift your back knee. So we're gonna get ready to come to a high lunge. So let's build the stability in our legs first. Come on your fingertips, pull your head away from your heel and firm up your legs. You're super strong here. 
When you're ready, inhale the arms out and up to come to crescent lunge or high lunge. Arms stay shoulder width here, fingers long and strong. Good, you're doing great. Take a couple breaths. It's a little harder when you're on the ground than the wooden floor or at your home or your yoga studio, right? Inhale, straighten the front knee. And exhale, open up warrior two. So just spin the back heel down, ground the back foot, open the torso, stretch the arms so the wrists are above your ankles. The front knees bent, the back leg straight. Look out over your front fingertips. Without moving the feet, inhale, straighten the legs, lift the arms, let your palms touch. Look to the long edge of your mat. And exhale, open the arms, bend the front knee, warrior two. Do that again, inhale, straighten, lengthen, lift. Good, exhale, release, warrior two. Take that one more time, lift up. And exhale, release, hold the bottom. You're in warrior two, Virabhadrasana two, deep breath in. Exhale, tip back. Keep the bend in the front knee today so it's a reverse warrior or dancing warrior to hold. Good. Inhale, arms open, shoulder height. Exhale to cartwheel down, left arm, right arm, pivot on the ball of the back foot to hold. So from here, keep your back knee lifted or drop it down. Press into the right hand, fingers are block, and lift your left arm. Take a deep breath in and full breath out. Good, release this top arm. This is gonna be a little different. So instead of flowing, you're gonna come back up on your fingers. You're gonna come back up to your high lunge. There's a little wiggly, wiggle, little wobbly maybe hold. And we're gonna take this right into a balance from here. So from this place, bring your hands to prayer. We're gonna take our weight forward and see if we can bring that right leg up just to balance a little bit. So you're gonna shift forward, lift the right leg, just see if you could pick it up. Just pick it up, just stand on one foot, pick it up. And you're gonna place it to tree pose. I'm gonna move this way. So from here, just put it on your ankle or put it on your calf or bring it right up to your inner thigh. Got it? And smile. Good, you're doing so good. Beautiful trees today. You can keep the hands at prayer or you could bring them above the head. Wiggling and wobbling, totally fine. Arms could open. Good, breathe. Now from here, open the arms, release that, put it hip width distance, bend the knees and come into chair. Sit the hips back, come into chair. Hips back, knees bent, hips bent, hold. Good, stretch long. Inhale, Tadasana, mountain pose. And exhale, swan dive, straight legs or bent knees. Inhale, lengthen flat back, Ardha Uttanasana, stretch head away from tail. Exhale, deep fold, soften the knees. Inhale, reverse swan dive, those bent knees, they straighten up at the top, palms touch this time. Bring your thumb between your eyebrows, that place of intuition or inner knowing or your third eye, big breath there. Exhale, thumb to heart center or sternum, returning back to any intention you might have created. Take a deep breath in there. And exhale, release your arms. So let's do the whole thing from the top. So make sure you're near the top of the mat. Inhale, sun breath. Exhale, bent knee swan dive. You're doing so good. Inhale, stretch it out, hands to shins or fingers to mat. Exhale, deep fold with soft knees. Inhale, reverse swan dive all the way up. Exhale through prayer to pause for a moment, deep breath in there, standing tall. And exhale, release, two more times, inhale, sun breath. Exhale, bend your knees, swan dive. Inhale, lengthen flat back. Exhale, soften, deep fold. Inhale, reverse. Exhale through prayer. Pause for a breath, deep breath in. And release your arms. One more time, stay at the bottom. Inhale. Exhale. Inhale, stretch. Exhale, release to stay at the bottom and step your left leg back. So you go ahead, left leg comes back. You're framing the foot. If you can't touch the ground comfortably, bring your hand to your thigh or put blocks or something underneath the hands if you're home or if you brought props. Bend the back knee, lift the heart, look up. 
Exhale, lift the hips, straighten the legs, head towards shin or straightish, however they go today. Bend the knees, both the knees, front knee, back knee, heart forward, you can look up. Exhale, hips lift high, legs straight or come as close to straight as they can. Then one more time, bend the knees, inhale, look up. Exhale, lift the hips. And then this time we bend the front knee and we bend the back knee so you can let the back knee drop down and just pause there. Make sure your front knee is above your front ankle, not passing the front ankle. And then inhale, lift the arms, either holding there in Tadasana with the arm, shoulder width, or if you want a little different variation, let the palms touch, interlace your fingers, point at the sky, and then lift the ribs up and maybe take the head and throat back to look up. Exhale, release, dive forward. We're going to pull the hips back. So send the hips back, stretch the front leg, flex your foot, walk the hands back. You might want to wiggle the front heel forward a little bit to get more into the back of the hamstring. You're on your fingertips, pull the head away from the tail, and then maybe fold over the front leg and take a few breaths there. You guys are doing great. Good. Let's take it forward again. So come over the sole of the front foot, bend the front knee, dip the hips, walk the hands back. Now we're coming up from here. So the back toes curled under. You lift the back knee. So we're back to a lunge. Come on your fingertips. Now this is take some balance and strength. So be gentle with yourself. Firm up your legs. Press down into your feet. And then start to lift the arms up. All the way up to frame the head. Take a moment to pause when you get into that crescent lunge or high lunge. Find your steady gaze, just to your focal point. And then inhale, straighten the front knee. Exhale, open up warrior two, heel spins down, body opens, arms widen. Look out over your front finger. So you're gonna have your right knee bent, so your front leg. So make sure your front leg that's at the top of the mat, your toes are forward, your knee is bent, your back leg is straight. Yep, so right knee bent, left leg straight. Look over right fingertips, front fingertips. Without moving your feet, straighten your legs, lift your arms, let your palms touch, shift your gaze towards the long edge of the mat. And exhale, open the arms wide, look back towards your front fingertips. Do that again, inhale, straighten the legs, lift the arms, shift the gaze. Exhale, release. You're doing so good. One more time, inhale, lift. And always feeling free to move at your own pace, to modify, to adjust. Hold your warrior two. Take a deep breath in. Full breath out. Keep the legs where they are. Dance your body back. Back hand to back leg. Knees bent today. Look up. Reverse warrior. And open arm shoulder height. Warrior two. Your drops out of two. Deep breath in. And exhale, slow cartwheel. One arm, the other arm, pivot on the ball of the back foot. So you pluck your heel up and close your hips off. And then either keep the back knee lifted or drop it if you want a little break. Press into the left fingertips or hand and lift the right arm. Hold here. Couple breaths. Take a deep breath in. And exhale, release your hand down. So it's a little different. So instead of flowing back, we're going to come back up like we did on the other side. So the back knee lifts up if it was dropped. We're going to come up again. You can do it. Come high on your fingertips. Get your legs ready. So strong legs. Press down like you're going to press through the ground as you lift your arms up. And now we're coming to that balance. So all we're going to do is float our left leg up and then eventually place it into tree. So start by bringing your hand to prayer so you kind of pull everything into midline and then begin to pitch your body weight forward so you transfer your weight onto the right foot and then you just drag that left leg up and just hold it so it lifts and then it comes to your ankle your calf or your inner thigh so you found your tree pose find your steady gaze or balance and then take your arm variation wherever that is for you today it could be the same that you did on the other side or different Lots of places you could put the arms, whatever feels good for you. Good, maybe open the arms if you wanted to. Then we're gonna float this tree right into our standing squat or Utkatasana. So release the arms down, parallel feet, stomp your foot down, bend the knees, sit back into chair and lift the arms. 
Good. Sit low and hold. Breathing. Good. Straighten the legs. Tadasana. Exhale. Swan dive. Straight or bent knees. Inhale, lengthen flat back, Ardha Uttanasana, stretch head away from tail. And exhale, deep fold. This time let's take it to the mat. So step the right leg back to a low lunge. You could either keep the back knee lifted or dropped. Step the left leg back to meet it, either lifted or dropped. So you're choosing right now to be either in a plank pose with knees lifted or a modified plank with knees dropped. We're about to take a traditional flow or vinyasa, so you could either drop the knees for modified chaturanga or keep them lifted with me. You're going to glide forward an inch or two, point the elbows back, hover or come to belly. Inhale, cobra or up dog. You're going to hold and then drop the knees, come to child. Sit all the way back. When you get into child, just pause, arms stretch forward. Palms could press to prayer, they could fold to your head or take the arms alongside the body. So just take a moment to breathe there. Good job. From here, unravel the arms forward if they were in a different variation. Slide the hands back near the shoulders. Either roll up or lengthen up to sit on your heels. On an inhale, take a high kneel, lift the hips, lift the arms, stand up on your shins. And as you exhale, bring your hands to your low back, drop your chin, fingers down and elbows back. on your heels or if that doesn't feel comfortable come to cross legs so we're just going to do a little bit of shoulder work seated so if sitting on your heels is something that feels comfortable you can stay if it's not come to cross legs or any other variation of seated it doesn't really matter how you're sitting take your arms out to T from here bring your right arm under and your left arm on top right arm under left arm on top bend your elbows so your arms reach up to the sky and so you're really just hooking underneath this left arm and if the, you could either have a lot of space or if there's the flexibility there you start to close the gap and touch your thumb or touch your palms together so you're in eagle arms good <laughs> We're putting on a show for the kayakers. <laughs> the yoga show. What's that? He was joining in. He was joining in. Oh, good. That's great. We could yoga by kayak. That's a new idea, you guys. We could have people online, on the lawn, and in their kayaks. Good. Move your arms over to the right, your eagle arms, and then turn your head away from the arms. And just close the eyes or find that steady gaze. Good, unravel, bring your elbows in line with the shoulders, release, so just kind of a sweeping down and up with the arms, just to free up the arms, look up. And exhale, open arm, shoulder height to pause. So we're gonna do the other side, so just right here. And then bring your, what side did we not do? Take your, this way, yeah. <laughs> Left arm under right, bend your elbows, there's either a gap or you touch your thumb or your palms. That's the problem with teaching yoga online. If I mess up or forget, I have no one to ask. <laughs> Usually in class I can be like, wait a second, did we do this side yet? So bring the, uh, so for you guys online, I'm sorry if I've been messing up for the past five months. Bring your arms over to the left and turn your head to the right. Good. Good job. And let's release that. Sweep the arms down to come up. All the way free up the shoulders. Look up. And exhale. Let's take our hands behind us. So interlace your fingers. And then press your fists down, squeeze the backs of the shoulders together just like you did on the very beginning, lift the heart. And from here, you're going to tip. And 
and put your forehead to the ground and lift your hips. And then you might even come to a pose called yoga mudra where you just kind of roll up towards your hairline and then roll up towards your head and then let the arms reach away from your back. You could come join us if you are cross legs and you want to give this a try. Or you could just be in a forward fold over your cross legs. So a couple breaths in some variation of yoga mudra arms with these interlaced fingers. Take another deep inhale. Exhale, release, roll out of it, release the hands. If you're with me on your um, shins, come and stand high. If you're cross leg, just float the arms up. And then we're gonna come to seated. So open the arms and just take the hips off to the side and everybody swing your legs around to the front. So we're just sitting on our bottoms. Oops. And the legs are around to the front. Let's uh, see, let's do a little bit of core work and maybe a seated twist here together. So hold on to the backs of your legs the tips of your toes. I'm going to come into a variation of um, boat pose or navasana. So you're balancing on your hips, your sitting bones, the toes are not touching. Lift your shins parallel towards the sky or the ceiling. And then there's um, the ability to release the legs, but you don't have to. You could straighten your legs. You knew where I was going, right? She's like, oh no. Here we go. Drop that. There's not. So it's okay. The knees hold. Hold the back of your legs. Tap your toes down and then float your heart up. Let's open up our knees again. Soles of feet together. Hold your ankles just like we did in the beginning of class. Sit up tall and then hinge over your bound angle legs. Hold the legs, the ankles, or the feet. So this should feel like a nice release. And just pause here. Good, lengthen to come up. Let's bring the hands along the shins to catch the knees and bring the legs together. Send your right leg forward and keep your left knee bent. You're going to hold your left shin, and if you can, the long leg's going to come right in line with the belly button, otherwise keep it hip width, and if there's space, cross the bent leg on top. If there's not space, keep it hip width distance. Hold here. Option one, you stay with a straight leg. Option two, if you want, you could take this bottom leg, kind of tip towards your right hip, and tuck it under. So you could either have a tucked under bottom leg or a straight bottom leg. So they're both good, just different, however your body wants to move. Hold your shin. Sit up tall. If you're taking the tucked leg, just make sure that foot gets all the way over your thigh. Yep. Both sitting bones down. Hold your shin. Sit up tall. Good. Lift your same arm as bent leg. Good. And then twist towards your bent leg. Hug it into your elbow crease and take that long arm down towards the ground. Use that arm to help root down into the fingers so you can rise up through the head and the heart. And then you look to the side or take the gaze all the way over the back shoulder. If you wanted to mix up the arm variation here, you could take the um, uh, right arm and just hook it across that top leg. So the elbow comes to the outer edge of the thigh. Good, unwind your body. So let's take a hip opener from here. So if you're in this version with the bent bottom leg, you could walk this top leg out towards cow face and the bottom leg kind of kicks under. So you start to braid your inner thighs and your knees. You could also do this with a bottom straight leg. So you'd be in half cow face. Or if that just doesn't feel good on the knees or the hips, take cross legs with your um, right leg in front. So either cross legs with right leg in front, half cow face, that is my right or left leg, left leg in front, or left leg on top, or full cow face. Okay? Hands could touch the feet to sit up tall, or hand could touch one foot and touch the ground, or touch the ground on both sides, lift up. And then go ahead and hinge forward if you want to take a forward fold. And you'll just pause either a straight back or a rounded back. You got it. So you're either in cross legs, cow face, or half cow face. Lots of ways to do this. Lots of hips in the 
space today and online today, so all of our hips are set up differently genetically, just from when we're born, but also activities that we may do or may not do. And it doesn't really matter which version you're in, as long as you're feeling sensation, getting a stretch, that's perfect. So one is not better than the other or harder, just different depending on your body will depend on what variation you need to take in order to feel this most efficiently and effectively. Good, come on up. Let's unravel our legs, you can tip back. Maybe just take a couple windshield wipers like we did in the very beginning to loosen that up. And then bring your knees up towards the sky, shuffle the feet hip width, whole thing on the other side. So the left leg comes long, the right knee stays bent, feet are hip width or long leg in line with belly button, top leg crosses, long, bottom leg either stays long or you tuck it under. So choose your variation and one side might be different than the other. Hold your shin, get yourself ready, sit up tall. If your leg is straight, flex your foot. So firm up your bottom leg, good. And then lift your same arm as bent leg or top leg. You got it. Twist towards your top leg, gather it into your elbow crease. Take the long arm down to the ground. You could also hook your elbow across your lap. Look to the side or over the back shoulder and hold. You got it. And breathe. Very good, unravel your upper body. So we're about to come into the hip opener of your choice. You could be in cross legs with that right leg in front or other leg if you already did that side. You could be in full cow face, walking that leg across your lap and kind of kicking the bottom leg out or half cow face. So bottom leg straight or tucked. So you're gonna hold, if you can, the sole of one foot in the ground or if you're in full cow face, maybe the soles of both feet. And before you go anywhere, sit up tall. If you're in cross legs, plug your fingers down into the earth. Sit up tall, lengthen, long spine, open heart and chest, deep breath in. And exhale, hinge at your hips. Take a long flat back or round your spine and just take a couple breaths. Good. And when you're ready, lengthen to come up, push the head away from the tail, unravel your legs, tip back, take the feet as wide as your mat, and just a couple windshield wipers one more time. Okay, now let's bring our knees up towards the sky, shuffle feet hip width, scoot your bottom forward, so you're gonna come near the top of the mat, just so you have room to lay back. So you can lift your arms up towards the sky. And then as you exhale, you'll start to slowly lay down. So tuck the tail, scoop your belly, and come all the way down onto your back. Take a big stretch out, so send the legs forward, send the arms behind you. Stretch out the armpits and chest and fingers and toes. Gather your knees up into your body. Hold your knees or shins or wrap the arms around the legs and take a rock side to side. Place your hands onto your knees and circle your knees one way. And circle your knees the other way. Good. Your feet come to the mat and your knees up to the sky. 
You have an option here to either let your knees fall open to bound angle and feet come together, recline bound angle. Arms fall off the body if that's too intense or too much for the hips or the knees or the back. Do the opposite of that. Have your feet on the ground, step them as wide as your mat and let your inner thighs and knees touch. So either lay on your back for recline bound angle or lay on your back for supported rest with inner thighs and knees touching. This is the last thing we'll do together before Shavasana, and you'll have time, of course, to move in any way. So always honor your body if there's any in-between stretches or movement that you need. The arms could come either off the body like Shavasana, or you could place your hands on your belly or a hand on the heart and chest, one hand on the chest, one hand on the belly, or both hands on the belly. And take a moment to feel your body again, feel your physical body, honoring this beautiful, strong, able body, healthy body that you've been blessed with. Honoring your heart. And again, coming back to that idea of letting all of it in, however you're feeling today, whatever emotions you're experiencing, Whatever state of being you're in right now, it's okay. Allowing it all without pushing anything away. Being gentle and kind with yourself. Take a deep breath in. And full breath out. As you lie here for a moment longer, just notice how you feel in your body right now. And if there's any last movement or posture or stretch that your body is craving before you come to Shavasana, you can take that at any point now. So you could stay right where you are if this is feeling good and you want to rest here for a couple more breaths or moments. Or if there's any final adjustment, posture, or movement that the body would like to take, feel free to move in any way right now. It doesn't have to be a yoga pose, whatever you want to do in your body or not do. There's no right or wrong. And then you'll take as long as you need to bring your practice to completion. And when you feel like you're ready to rest, you can come into Shavasana and we'll eventually meet there. And I'll start to guide you in, but there's no rush. So if you're in another pose or working through something else, just take your time to come to rest. But eventually lie on your back. If there's any discomfort in the low back with the legs outstretched straight, you could bring your feet to the mat, knees up to the sky, and knock the inner thighs and knees together. Otherwise, legs come long. And they can be slightly greater than hip width distance apart, and the feet can fall open. And then you can take the arms off the body if you haven't already and just let them be about 45 degrees away from the body at the armpit. And let your palms open up towards the sky, backs of hands rest on the earth. Let your head be right in line with the rest of your body. Close your eyes if that's comfortable. Let your breath start to soften. Feel your mind settle. And let your body completely relax. You'll take just a couple moments here in stillness and silence. 
enjoying this rest and taking in whatever you need from this morning's practice. As you're lying here without needing to move your body or change your body just bring your awareness back to your body noticing the shape that it's creating on the ground or the mat bring your awareness back to your breath Begin to deepen your breath again and let the breath be sent to all the edges and corners of your body. As your awareness deepens, perhaps bring movement in if you'd like, wiggling fingers or toes or moving or not moving in any way that feels good right now. Eventually, you can come to either side into a fetal pose with the knees into the belly, the arms into the chest. Maybe take a moment there. And then start to gradually press yourself up to seated when you're ready. You can let the backs of the hands touch the knees or the lap, open the palms up to the sky. Sit up tall, just like you did in the very beginning. Come back to your breath, take a deep inhale. And full exhale. On your next inhale, let your hands float together to prayer position or Anjali Mudra, palms will meet in front of the heart. As you exhale, bow your head to your heart. And we'll end together on the sound of Om, the sound of community, starting with a letting go breath. Take a breath in through the nose. Exhale a sigh. And we'll begin deep breath in. And as your head bows back to yourself, taking one last moment to honor the divinity and the light that shine within you. Namaste. Thank you. Thank you guys so much for being here with me today out on the lake and online. Thank you guys. So I'll see you next time. If you have any questions, please let me know. And we'll be back in September to do this again. So have a great day. I'll see you guys soon. Thank you. Thank you.